in the office, hard at work, and I wanna give you guys a couple things that I do as part of my cabinet installation process. Uh, some things that really help out in the long run and things you should do to make sure you avoid problems down the road. Let's take a look. All right, first thing I do is I find the studs and I draw lines where the studs are. This helps me uh, when I'm going to install the cabinetry, I can make sure I drive a screw into the studs uh, to secure the cabinet. Uh, another thing that I do is I use my laser level, which is over there. And I find the high point of my floor. So my cabinets are 34.5 inches tall, and I measure that just using a tape measure and a pencil from the floor up to where that point is, and I make a mark. And I do that a couple more times around the room. And then I use my laser level to see where those points lie. And I can see on the sides, that is right on. But as we go farther down towards the middle of the room, you can see it's off. So what I want to do now is, when I install the cabinets, make sure to use shims to bring that height up so that the cabinet uh, top is right on the laser level. The day is done, made a lot of good progress today. A lot of sweat, a little bit of blood, but no tears. Let me show you what I did. All right, here it is. I've got all of the lower base cabinets installed. We've got the two drawer end units, and then we have the door units in the middle here. Uh, went pretty smoothly. I got all the electrical uh, pretty much done. I got this outlet in the back of that cabinet. I got cat five cable there for the internet and I still need to get a outlet extender for that guy from Home Depot tomorrow. Um, but overall, made a lot of good progress and uh, excited to continue tomorrow. Stay tuned. We're using butcher block, which is um, a material we went back and forth on for this. We could have done a, a custom piece of wood, which would have been very expensive, but the length is what really kills us here. Um, we could have done um, finished plywood, but then we would have had a seam somewhere, plus we would have had to miter the edge to have a nice finish on it. Didn't want to do that, so we went with butcher block, which is easy to pick up. It's available at local hardware stores and it's fairly affordable. So we are going to join two pieces together to form the countertop for this built-in. A um, couple things to note is Butcher Block does have two sides, so make sure you use the finished side um, on you know, the part that's gonna be seen. The underside does contain some knots and some imperfections, so just something to note with Butcher Block. Um, also, the edges come beveled. There's a slight bevel to it here. So to make this a tight seam where we're gonna join this, I'm gonna make a cut, a straight cut across here. So it's a nice, uh, clean line. And hopefully you won't see it. Over here, we've got quite a bit of um, bowing in this wall here. It's very tight over here, but as you can see, there's about maybe a quarter inch or more gap there. So I'm gonna cut this at an angle to try to minimize the gap and uh, so to do that angled cut, I'm not gonna use a table saw. Instead, I will, I busted out my horses here and I'm going to use a circular saw to make that cut. So, wish me luck.
guy built. We um, made it out of three quarter inch plywood. And we have the B board on the back as the paneling. So we have the larger shelf right here. We've got the electrical box that we need to put in there. And then this will be scooted over against the wall. We've got three shelves and then up here, uh, this is where the crown molding is gonna come around the wall and across. And then we have our um, lights here, the sconces that will shine down onto the shelf. So there's gonna be a, another piece of plywood that goes across this section up here. And then I will start assembling some trim up there as well as cut out the box for that sconce. Um, so a mirrored copy of this will go in that corner right there. And then we're gonna do the same beadboard paneling that's behind here on this, the middle section there, so. I'm installing the baseboards for the built-ins. Uh, came across one issue which I've dealt with before and I want to show you how to resolve it. All right, so you can see here our cabinets have a toe kick. It's the area right under here that's 
uh, built for if you're in the kitchen and you're standing up here, your toes can go in and you get a more comfortable uh, cabinet experience as you're prepping food. But for our office, we're not prepping food. We don't want this space down here. And we need to fill this in. So in our design, we actually have a piece of baseboard which ties into our uh, baseboards in the room. But if we just install it like this, well, I could probably nail it right there, but at any time uh, a chair hit it or my foot kicked it, you know, it could uh, warp or come apart. So obviously that's not a good solution. Uh, what I did in the pantry, what I'll do here is make supports, which uh, bring this uh, area out flush. So you have a nice surface to nail to. So let me kind of show you what I did here. I made a little box out of scrap wood. And what I'm going to do is secure this piece back with nails. And then I'm going to fit this piece around it. And then I'm going to nail on the sides to secure it to that cleat. And then this will be perfectly flush uh, with the outer cabinet. And I can secure the baseboard and nail here and nail here for a nice solid fit. So I've got about a 12 foot span here. I'm going to do five of those cleats and that should do the trick.
All right, in the office, and we are prepped for paint. We've got the cabinets tarped off down there. We've got plastic on the floor. We've got painter's tape where we need it. Megan did an awesome job with all these windows. So we are ready. So the plan is we're gonna hit the ceiling first with a flat white paint, uh, two coats of that. And then uh, the next day we are going to tarp off the ceiling and then do primer on the uh, exposed wood and the cabinets and let that dry for 24 hours, sand it down, just lightly sand, and then uh, we will apply the paint. So we're doing a eggshell paint for the cabinets and the trim, and a matte paint for the walls. All with the same color though. So it's gonna look really sharp when it's all done, but now comes the fun part of spraying paint. Here we go. Butcher block for the most part looks pretty good, but there are a couple areas that don't look so hot. So here we got some uh, some roughness. So what I'm going to do is uh, sandpaper this area and fill it in with wood filler and let that dry overnight. There's another issue right here, which I will need to fill that little crack as well and do the same thing. But Overall, the primer went on really well, very happy with the results. So we'll let this sit overnight and lightly sand it tomorrow morning and prep for uh, the Roycroft.
back in the office and I'm painting again. You probably thought I was done with painting, but I sprayed everything in the eggshell paint. So there's a slight sheen to that, which is great for the cabinetry. However, for the walls, it's a little too shiny. So we prefer the look of matte paint on walls. It just, it's a very soft feel and it hides the imperfections of the drywall so much better than eggshell or satin. So right now I'm cutting in, you can see here the, the difference. I've cut in the uh, matte paint on the sides so over here and over here, and you can see the difference. This is the eggshell paint. So in certain lights, you can really tell the difference. And it's just a much softer look. So I'm gonna cut this in, then roll it. And it should only take one coat because we have the